guys welcome to the channel once again green gold farms hope you've had a wonderful day and today's video i'm going to be speaking about uh just again same topic speak about all the time in sheep farming you know the little one two and three that you need the do some don't before you start a sheep farming in uh in africa or in ghana to be precise um so i uh, hope you enjoy the video um any questions uh, drop it in the comment section or you can always send me a message on my whatsapp uh, any um, suggestions you can drop it in the comment again uh, so hope you enjoyed the video um, and thanks again for tuning in to the channel so just enjoying the grazing not much to graze at you know, during the dry season, all the grasses, most of them are pretty much dry, um, which affects them massively. You know, so you always have to make sure that you supplement them. Supplementation is a must during the dry season. You always have to make sure that you supplement them. You have to give them the added nutrition, nutrition, nutritional value that they kind of lack or miss out. Uh, in the absence of the fresh green grasses you, know, you can give them cassava tails you can give them some grains corn soya you know um wheat there's lots of other types of grains that can help supplement their feed keep them in good shape till the rainy season comes where in that time there's abundant of uh, fresh crops grasses that you can give them you know or some people store feed during the rainy season and um, and then yeah, use it for them during the dry season. In our case, what we do in the rainy season is still the same thing we do in the dry season. Only difference is when they are grazing during the dry season, the grasses are not as fresh as they are in the rainy season. Other than that, we feed them, we supplement them with grains corn soya and um, wheat bran uh, we supplement them with cassava and plantain pills dried of course and recently we've also started uh, introducing silage just to see how that does you know as long as we can produce the feed to help cut down cost we're gonna experiment with, experiment with every opportunity that we get you know and see what works for us in the long term because farming 80 70 percent is about feeding the cost is about 70 to 80 percent is about feed you know and that's the main part is feeding and again feeding too determines the outcomes of the animal or the outcome of your investment so we also have to make sure that we get a feed right and in the same time save money so that's what we're planning on doing um, it's just a little advice that I wanted to just share out. You know, just watching them, enjoying them graze. You know, we've got um, some additional ones in there as well. Some balami in there. We've got some Sudanese fat tailed sheep in there. Um, again, it's all about improving the genetics of the breed. You know, and one of the reasons why I'm so fascinated about the Sudanese breed is their feed conversion rate. You can feed the Sudanese and the Balami with the same feed, but the body condition of the Sudanese is going to be 10 times better than the Balami on minimal feed. Balami needs very high nutritional feed to keep them in tip-top condition. Whereas the Sudanese, everything you give them, they basically will eat it and they will make the best out of whatever you give them to put them in good shape you know good condition and they're very meaty animals very heavy a little bit slow growth rate compared to the balami but in the end term they're very uh, meaty you know very heavy animals and again i love the feed conversion you know just essential you know because you want your animals to always look good and uh, always look in the best shape so we've got some sudanese in there as well um, like I told you before, we've got some balamis in there as well. 
It's all about improving the genetics, improving the size of our animals, which we have been slowly and gradually doing. So hopefully by the end of this year, there's going to be, again, better improvement, you know, with the Balami crosses, the Sudanese crosses, with the local West African dwarfs, and then the Sudanese crosses, the Balami. So just so many different things that we're going to try out, see what's best and what works out uh, for us in our environment, in our region. And then we're going to stick with that moving forward and, and see where that leads us to. So thanks once again for taking your time out to watch this video. Um, if you want to start farming, the time is now. Don't wait for anyone, you know. Don't get scared. If you if you take risk, you lose. You learn from it, you know. You only lose if you quit. Just don't quit. Learn from it. Keep moving forward, and you're gonna recoup your losses in the future, you know. So, no point in waiting. You're gonna end up missing the boat. So, jump in it, you know. Um, do what needs to be done. Make sure you've planned. Make sure you've done your research. Make sure about the land, you know, about the feed, all of that before acquiring your animals. But yeah, do that now. Don't wait because time waits for no man. And get the breeds from the right reputable breeders. Don't go buy them from the market. Don't go buy them from people that don't keep records. Um, don't go buy them from <clears throat> people that sort of left them wandering, you know, around the streets and being crossed by any ram. They don't know who the father to this to their baby you're buying is. Go and buy them from a reputable breeder that keeps records that can give you at least two to three generations of pedigree of the animal that you're purchasing and give you about six months to a year record of the vaccinations the animal uh, uh, vaccination record of the animal you're purchasing. You know, can give you the history, can give you what it feeds on better and what it doesn't do well on. So keep um, that in mind, you know, always buy from a reputable breeder some people will go to you and tell you that yeah this this breed is this this breed is that you know uh, it's pregnant no oh, is this is that you know most of people um cross or breed the animals when they're old get them pregnant so they're looking a bit fat and you buying them thinking you're buying a pregnant animal nine times out of ten that baby from that animal is going to be very weak and probably won't survive i'm talking from experience and secondly, after the animal gives birth, that's when you're going to see the raw true age, uh, the size of the animal. And then they're going to start suffering because it's very old, you know. So, like I said, there are certain animals that shouldn't be sold for breeding. They should be straight butchering, straight for the, freezer, for, for the freezers. Shouldn't be for breeding. But there's some people out there that will sell you anything, you know, just to fight in your pocket. So just bear that in mind and be very, very vigilant when you're purchasing breeding animals keep that in mind you know don't just go buy pregnant animal because you think that oh it's pregnant it's going to give birth for me quickly and blah 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 no don't don't try to take the shortcut because in the long term you end up paying more and you end up you might, not, you might even lose the animals again i'm talking from experience you know it's best to if you buy an animal that's given birth once that's fine if they hasn't they haven't given birth before that's better you know, but don't go buy a pregnant animal that 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 looks very heavily pregnant. You know, because bear in mind, if that breeder selling an animal that's heavily pregnant, why is he not keeping that animal? He's a breeder himself. He's got a perfect animal that's heavily pregnant. He's gonna keep the animal till he gives birth, and then maybe sell on the animal. But he, they fatten them, they breed them when they're old. They can't sell them when they're very old, so they make sure they get them pregnant and add a bit of value so you think that you're buying a pregnant animal by the time you buy the animal and the baby dies you might you might end up losing the animal itself so again bear that in mind <clears throat> um uh what else can i add on sorry guys i don't plan my videos you know i just walk and talk and speak my mind and from experience so i might get certain things wrong i don't know everything and if you do, you can you always write to correct me. And I'm always open on learning. Because I don't know anything like I said. But anyway, that's my little advice. You know, if you wanna get into sheep farming, um <clears throat> make sure you got your feed right. You know, your feed hundred percent. Get that right before you, you before you even think about starting. 
um, get the land, do your research, uh, whether the area you're allowed to raise sheep or you're not before buying them, you know, and then find the right management, you know, educate them, make sure they know their stuff, make sure they know about, about sick, uh, uh, about the animals, the symptoms of sick animals. They know about diseases, they know about vaccinations. They can read and write. Any vaccination that's done, record can be kept. So make sure you do that um, before venturing into sheep farming. So that's my little advice. I hope this helped, you know, and I hope it helps you in your future, whoever it, it, it may help. Even if it's one person, I'm, I'll be glad that it does, you know. But like I always say, each one teach one, uh, we all learn from each other. So have a wonderful day and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Um, make sure that again, you got a reputable vet that knows what he's doing. Not um, this vet that a lot of people will be like, yeah, I'm a vet, I'm trained, I'm this, I'm that, blah, blah, blah. And they don't know what they're doing. And if you're not careful, they're going to use your animals as an experiment. You know, they're going to end up using them to test out their experiment and, and their learning and development, basically using your farm as a guinea pig. And you don't want that because you're paying them. So make sure that you find the right vet. It might cost you a little bit more. Don't cut corners. Make sure that you find the right vet. Depending on the, on the area that you're in, you can always contact me. You know, I can give you my vet's number free of charge. You can give him a call. He can help you out. Or he can, he might know someone somewhere that might help you out. So make sure that you always got a right vet at your farm. You know, that on, on speed dial, anytime it's needed, you can get him. Um, and your management has to be on point. You know, the person needs to know about animals, needs to know about signs of diseases, needs to know about the nutrition, needs to know about uh, lameness and, and diarrhea and deworming. And basically needs to be on point of medication and also needs to be educated, needs to be able to know how to read and write.